Hello, Julia here, and thank you for joining me here today. I am going to start a project for my design team work for Paper Inspirations, and I'm going to make a little journal, and we'll make this journal together um, throughout this month. Um, today, I'm just going to put my papers together and uh, do page one and two. Okay, so part of my design team kit was this um, packet of Uniquely Creatives um, pattern paper and it's juniper and sage. Now it's beautiful paper and I've decided to create a little album with it or a little uh, journal with it. Um, it's white base so it's something a bit different. I'm normally creating with a cream base but it's so pretty I thought it would be well and truly worth using. So what I've done is I've taken uh, four pages I think of the pattern paper and I've trimmed it down to 8 inches by 11 inches so I'm going to end up with an 8 inch by 5.5 inch journal and I haven't worried about the cover as yet these are just my pages so I've um, put a patterned cardstock and then a piece of plain white cardstock then another pattern then a plain white pattern, plain white and pattern and that's the centre. So I've used seven sheets here all together. So that's going to give me what, seven fours 20, seven fours 28 aren't they? Uh, yeah anyway. Um, so I've got, I'm going to work my way through this album and um, I'll be taking you along with me. Now these are the off cuts from the full sheets of paper that I've cut and I will use those to create pockets and side tucks and embellishments and things like that. And there are some fussy cut uh, pieces, you know like sheets in the pack and I've fussy cut some of the items out. And I've also got some leaves and things on the back of this that I can fussy cut as I need them. So that's my plan at the moment. So um, this will have a cover over it, as I said. So this is going to be our first page. I'm going to decide what I want to do on this page. And um, then we'll start work on it. I have taken all of my pages to my sewing machine and I have stitched around the perimeter of them all. I've used a green coloured cotton that sort of blends in with the colour of green on the pattern paper. On my plain white sheets I have used this mixed media stencil, 13 Arts, it's called... Um, no idea what it's called and I've used some distress inks I've used a mixture of wild honey oops, squeezed lemonade fertilized amber and bundled sage so they're the inks I've used and I've just um, inked through using one of these domed blending tools and I've just done an assortment of colors and spread those out over all of the pages, well all of the white pages. I haven't done any on the pattern papers, just the plain papers. So you can see I've got a mixture of greens and yellows. I sort of couldn't really decide what colour to go with on here, um, being as how all the papers are green and white, but I certainly am not going to end up with a plain green and white um, journal so I thought I could bring it in some yellows maybe some pinks blues whatever so that's what I'm up to now now for the first um, page I want to put a bottom pocket on here which is probably not a great idea because most of the pattern is here but um, I can always move that around perhaps I'll put this one on the front and put that one in there so there we go so we've got um, pattern top and bottom there and I was going to use um, 
this paper to put a pocket on the bottom. Perhaps I should use the green one. Now if I'm going to change that, I could use that. Turn the back. Doesn't really go with it. We could use something like that that's just got a little bit of a pattern on it. I think I might use this one. So my pages are 8 inches by 5.5 inches. So with the stitching around the edges that makes them a little bit smaller if I want to fit my pockets inside of that stitching. I mean I can take my pocket right to the edge um, but I don't usually like to take them right to this edge anyway so I'm probably going to make my pockets 5 inches wide at the most 5 inches wide so I'm going to cut this how tall do I want my pocket um, can I cut that what have I got there got about 4 inches ok I'll cut that at 4 inches And um, what did I say I was going to do? Five inches. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to cut this at six inches. Because I'm going to have a little, you know, fold in to make my pockets nice and firm. So I'm going to score at half an inch on each edge. So that's five and a half and a half and a half an inch on the bottom and then I'm going to cut my corners out so just on an angle I'm also going to trim the top. Right, so then I can fold and burnish these sides. There's my pocket. Now I'm going to embellish this with something. Let's see what we've got here. I've got, as I said, I've to cut these off of some of the sheets of paper in the collection. And there is a ticket, admit one ticket. There's a circle like so and what else have we got here uh, I might um that there like that I'm go I'm going to go and have a look for some washi tape and I'm going to decide probably ink my edges with that frayed burlap. What do you think of that colour? Let's see what we think of that as a colour to do our inking. I think it might be a bit too bright. That looks alright. Do we want that? Or should I do brown? I actually think I like a mixture of the both, to be honest. I'm going to use my circle punch and just punch a divot in this. Now this is a two inch circle punch. Um, but you can use whatever. 
whatever size you have. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and stitch around the outside edge of it and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've stitched around it and now I'm going to attach it to my page. I'm going to position that sort of centrally and just a little bit above my stitching, like so. Okay, so now take these and ink around these. Looks like I've already inked around that one. So I'm just inking with the brown on there. And um, I have got some lace that I'm going to put under this. Some cheesecloth, which one would I use? Do you think maybe the cheesecloth? Yeah, okay. So, I'm going to cut a piece of that. I'm just going to Pull that and fray it and pull it out of shape a bit. Perhaps I should um, ink that a little bit. Find a scrap of paper here and just put a little bit of the vintage photo ink on it. Just to help it stand out a little bit from the background. It's a bit better, look. Okay, so if I Attach that, so just run a little bead of glue through there and put that on it. I'm not particularly looking for something that's perfectly straight. And now, where's my, oh there now, I'm wondering where my embellishments have got to. So I think I'm just going to attach that. There. Get it straightish. And this circular one. Just on there. I don't want it too high. I'll just add a little bit of frayed cloth poking out from behind I don't need to lug all those papers around together do I so that's um, our first pocket now I'm going to make a tag to go in here so I'll gather up all of my bits and pieces to do that and I will be right back Okay, so I've cut um, two tags, or well, I haven't finished them yet, but um, I've cut two tags and they are, I'll just measure them for you, that one is 7 inches by 4 inches and this one is 5 inches by 3.5 inches. And I've um, put some white cardstock on the back and I've used this stencil. It's a Kaisercraft stencil. It's one of those ones that come in four and they've got four different patterns on it. 
and I have uh, used um, what was it fossilized amber on this one and I've used the bundled sage on this one so now uh, and then I've just used a glue stick to stick in the middle section here stick the two pieces together I'm going to cut the corners now and I use this old uh, loyalty card to do my corners so I use that as a guide because I like to get the corners even and then once I have got my corners cut I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew around the edge this one's not as big so I might use a smaller corner that one no. that one I think I think I'll use this corner Like so. so these two tags are going to go in this pocket so they'll go in there like so and so I'm going to go and stitch around these now and then I'll decorate them a little okay I'll be right back so I lost my audio for this section somehow but what I've done is I've stitched around the outside of my tags and I have um, inked around them as well and I'm going to embellish them with uh, an assortment of things. Now, I keep a little container full of die cuts that I just cut from white cardstock. And then I put them in this little tray. And it's actually a, like a tray that chicken legs came in, I think. And um, then I've got them there to use. And if I want to colour them, I can colour them with my inks or paints or whatever I want to colour them with. So in this case, I'm just going to leave them white. Now the one that I'm using first of all is um, from Honeybee and it's called Lovely Layers Heart Vine. And um, it's just a lovely um, leafy die cut. It also comes with an outline in the die set. So you get the solid one and then you get an outline one as well. So you could cut it in your white and then outline it with gold or something like that if you wanted to. But um, I haven't done that. I'm just going with the solid white. Now to go with that, I'm going to just go through my little labels container. I've got um, a heap of labels here that I have uh, printed out, like they are free printables. And um, even though I love these labels, I cannot remember who I got them from. So I think once this lot's gone, I'm going to be on the hunt for some. So... If I do come across um, these labels in the meantime, I will link them in the description box. But at this stage, um, I don't know who they're from. So I've selected a rectangular one and a triangular shape one. And I'm going to ink around the edges of those and attach them over the top of the die cut leaves. I had a little piece of lace laying on my desk. So I've tied that into a bow, not a easy feat for me I'm not a very good bow tire I can tell you and I'm now going to attach that to the top of my uh, tag instead of having like a what do they call them at the tag topper I'm having my bow up there just as a little pretty pretty thing so I'm going to just um, clamp that in place and let it dry being lace and um, having a bit of bulk to it that little clamp will work wonders now for my second tag, um, once again I did the same thing with the edges, inking and um, stitching. And I have this sari silk ruffle, I think that came from Sue as well. And um, I'm going to use that for the tab on the top of this tag. Now I'm using the dark green to help bring out the greens in the background paper. I'm just folding it over and sticking it down using my art glitter glue. I find the art glitter glue works very well on fabric and um, you know you can't see the, the glue doesn't come through the fabric so I think it works quite well. Now um, the die cuts that I'm going to use for this one come from um, a Tim Holtz 
die and it's called Artsy Stems and it's number 665846 if you're interested in looking at that and I also used a um, die cut from Alina Craft for those tiny little leaves now that that die doesn't have a name on it so um, I can't tell you what that name is Alright, so um, I'm going to attach those to my um, tag and then over the top of it I'm going to add a little bit more of the uh, cheesecloth. The same as I did for the front, so I'm going to cut a bit, I'm going to distress it, the edges of it a bit and then I'm going to ink it with the vintage photo, then stick it down over the top of my stems or my flowers whatever you like to call them once I've done that I'm going to then select another label that's got some green around the edge and stick that on top of my cheesecloth once again sorry about the loss of the audio but um, I think you've got the idea I did create a pocket for the inside for the next page so I've cut a piece of pattern paper I think it's two inches wide and I have uh, stitched all around it and I have inked all around it and now I'm going to attach it to my book on my journal page just on the three sides so that it is a side pocket I took a, a little tag out of some fussy cut things that I had um, in my stash and I put a piece of lace behind that and attach that to the bottom of my little side pocket. When I realised later on in the video that I had lost this audio, I do give you a little bit of an explanation of this as well, so you'll probably hear all this again. Now for the tag, for that pocket I have got a piece of pattern paper this um, was well, not a tag it's a card and it is four inches by six inches I have uh, taken a piece of paper from this book and I have Attached, oh, I've cut it in halves lengthways and I've attached half of it to this side where I've got the text and then this side I've torn one edge and attached it on there and then I have um, stitched around the edge. Now I'm going to ink around the edge of this. I'm going because it's a, a journaling card. I will ink both sides because it will be, of course, movable. You'll be able to take it in and out. So we will be able to see both sides of it. I thought the um, checked paper would be excellent for writing on because uh, the checks, of course, give you a straight line. And then I've got this um, Minte Chippies. What's it called? Nature 2 set. And it's got lots of um, things in it. Lots of leaves in it, really. And I think um, some of them are like the mistletoe the ones for Christmas. But I thought I'm just going to pop that there. And I was wondering whether I needed to put anything under it or just let it go as it is. And to be quite honest with you, I think... I'm going to leave it as it is. So I'm just going to draw it that way or that way. This way. So I'm just going to use my art glitter glue and just dab that here and there. Um, you could use a sponge and sponge this on. Like you just put a bit of the glue on an acrylic block for example and then use a sponge to pick the glue up and then sponge it onto the back of the chipboard. I could have painted the chipboard like completely white but um, on this background I think this colour looks fine. 
So I'm trying to get a little dab of glue um, in like regular places so that it is going to be nicely stuck. I'm just going to pop that down there. So there we go, there's that. Now, to make the pocket here, to take it, so there's our front, which has those two tags in it. These two tags, so they sit in there. And then this pocket here, I just cut a piece of the pattern paper. And this piece is, where's my ruler wrong? Got so much stuff around here. This is two inches wide by eight inches tall because my journal is eight inches tall. Um, I've zigged, I've stitched around the edge of it, stuck it down with the, the art glitter glue on three sides. Then I've taken this um, tag that I just had in amongst some. Um, Fussy cut embellishments here and a bit of lace and stuck that there and now this will go in behind that like that so there we go there's our journaling spot and that will sit in there like that I could add more to that but I don't really think it needs it so I'm not sure actually whether there's too many pages in this I'm thinking that I might cut it down but I'll think about that and I'll let you know when I come back. Um, I think that I might trim it down to like three or four pages instead of seven. I think seven's too many. It looks too bulky because I'm only going to do like a, a fold around cover. And, you know, by the time you get some things in there, it'll be way too big, I think. So at this stage, I think I'm going to probably cut this down to four sheets I might take those out so I might trim it down to that and then I could make another one using these so I decided I wanted to add a little um, dangle to this larger tag so I've got one that I have made previously and oops see daisy and I will um, attach that to that it's better and I'm going to attach it to that with a bulb pin and seeing as how this is all done in gold I'm going to use a gold bulb pin so I'm just going to put that pin through there and then add that to my tag which is made with that ruffle and then it can just hang down like so and that can pop in there and that can hang out like that so that is I'm going to call that page done and I was thinking that I might make another journaling card or tag or something to go in here okay so what I've done is I've cut a piece of pattern paper it is four inches by seven inches and I've backed that onto a piece of white cardstock that I have stenciled with the same stencil that I used here um, and the green that's the bundled sage I have stitched around it and then I have taken a piece of this which is the Aqua Valley um, cotton frizz the variegated cotton frizz ribbon called Aqua Valley. I actually ironed that. I know, terrible thing to do. But um, I ironed it so that I could stitch it on properly. But uh, over time it will, you know, fluff up again. I've let it hang over the bottom. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Now I have um, fussy cut these um, flowers from... Uh, scrapbooking paper some time ago I did that and uh, I have inked around the edges of it with the vintage photo and now I'm going to attach 
some of these to the front of the thing. Now, I originally I was thinking of putting it over the top of that frizz, but I think what I'm going to do is tuck it under there, like so, so that it looks like it's poking out from under there. And I have some three others that I'm going to pop down the bottom here. So I'm going to put the larger one in the corner. Then I'm going to put this second bigger. I mean, this one and the next one I'm going to do are not that different in size anyway. I'm just going to pop that down there. And then this smallest one is going to go up here, just like so. So that's going to be the front of my uh, journaling card. As I said, that won't take long to fluff up. And I'm go I've got another one of these, so I'm just going to pop it on the back like that. Just, you know, you can still write on it. You can write around it. You can write over the top of it if you want to. But it's just a little bit of something on the back that, you know, when, when you're writing, you've got something pretty amongst your writing. So that will pop just on there like so. And then that will go in there. That goes there and that goes in there. So we've got that. So we've got the little bit of cotton frizz hanging down below the bottom of the of our page. So that's uh, that's what we've done in this this um, video. Alright, now that's definitely it. I am calling it a day for this, uh, these two pages and I will be back to go on with the rest of the folio later, or the rest of the journal. Now I have um, trimmed the number of pages down in here. There were just too many. By the time I do this and then put a cover on it, I think that will be uh, big enough. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and I hope you can come back and join me as I work my way through the journal. Um, as I said, this is a Paper Inspirations design team project and I will put all the links to all the products and everything that I've used in the description box below. So thank you for being here and I hope you can join me for my next video. Bye.